just give you this nice introduction. Casey Urban, Art and Murals, uh, featuring Lori Vogelsberg. <laughs> and others, I hope. <laughs> yes, a couple others. Okay, okay. It's all yours. Okay, so this particular mural I couldn't find a lot about. Um, it's beautiful and it's, uh, it's on the side of Lufty's Fish, Fried Fish in Kansas City, Missouri. Um, the, the artist is Emily Ding and she is originally from Texas and she uses spray paint and exterior latex paint to do all of her murals. Mm. And if you look online on her, some of her pro our, our projects that she's done, they're just fantastic. And she's done them all over the United States, Shanghai um, and Bali. So it, it's just, her, her work is beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, she uses plants and animals generally through her, uh, to do her communication in her murals. They're mm -hmm. all emotional, touching every one of them, whether they're an animal or, or uh, humans. Well, then, does, it, does it have a name? This one I could not find a name for. This, one. I, this is part of Kansas City every year has what they call the spree, no, I say I can't say it, Spray See Mo Festival, and they invite artists, local artists, and artists from all over the country to come in and, and create murals um, in, in Kansas City. So they've done this for several years now, and she was uh, part of the, the festival in 2019. And if you go mm -hmm. to the Spree, <laughs> See Spray Mo website, it, it will show you all of the years and all of the murals that have been done throughout town. Sea spray mo. Spray spray sea mo. Spray sea mo. Yeah. Just think of spray paint and sea mo. Sea mo festival. Yep. And they've done it four or five, maybe six years now. I can't remember how many. Um, next one, please. Yes. You know, one comment. Um, uh -huh. I was curious how Kansas City rated it. So I thought, ah, surely we've got so many murals around here. We must be number one, but we're not. Philadelphia is, it has 4,000 murals. Oh my gosh. Source. So I, I think they don't have a unpainted surface in the whole city. <laughs> you know, I've been, I've been by that Lufta's uh, place before from the front and it looks pretty drab, really. I didn't realize they had a nice mural on the side of their building, but I've seen oh, yeah, it. Before. Yeah, it's very pretty. Yeah, yeah, the other side of the building is not much. Mm -hmm. And, and Jonathan, Philadelphia had a head start on us. That's true. Just true. by a few years. <laughs> this one, I could not find a, a title for the mural either. It is done by a local um, street artist, muralist named Sabretooth Thomas, or his name is Richard Thomas. He's a muralist and done several throughout town, but he's also a tattoo artist at Sink or Swim Tattoos in Kansas City, Missouri. This one, oh, it, it, that Jonathan put down here, it's on 31st Street in Kansas City, Missouri. And this one was also done during the Spray, nope, Sea Spray Mo Festival. Next. Hmm, that's interesting. I wonder what it, what's, it, what's it telling us? I don't know. A lot of his murals have owls in them, and I, I couldn't quite get the gist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You know, some of these artists have a ton of online information and some of them are very, uh, there's very, very little. Okay, next. Okay, this one is in the Jazz District at, at that 18th and Vine. It was in an alley. I saw it and took the picture. I can't find anything on it. There are a few pictures of it online. There's no artist signature, um, nothing. I just thought it was fun. Because who doesn't like cake? Cake Alley. Cake, cake Alley. Alley, yep. Yeah. It's, it's right across, uh, no, that's not the one. One of these is across the street from the Gem Theater, but I don't think it's this one. I think the meter down below may indicate that that's what you get if you have too much cake. Oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah, I couldn't find anything on this one. So the rest of them from here on out, I have more information on, but there was a few of them I, that I liked, but I just could not find hardly anything. I, I like this one too. I like Cake Alley. Yeah, it's just kind of fun. Yeah. All right, next. Okay, this also is in, no, this is not at 18th in mind. This one is um, 
on Locust Street, a 1707 Locust. And the artist is Matt Grondek, and he's from Pittsburgh um, and currently lives in Los Angeles. But he, I think, has been part of the, the festival also. Um, he does, his, he's done murals. He's got art hanging in, in museums and, and galleries. Um, he does a lot of cartoon art. You know, he's got Mickey Mouse, Donald Duck. He's got Bart Simpson. Simpson. He's got Sylvester and Tweety. Um, he calls himself a destructive, deconstructive pop artist and has exhibits, exhibits all over the world. He did his first comic book when he was still in grade school and still paints comic book characters. Did you have the picture of the deconstructed one, Jonathan? Yes. That's what his art generally looks like. So we were pretty fortunate to get a constructed Mickey. Although Mickey is kind of deconstructed, but not as much as this one. But the, the inset picture is what a lot of his typically, typically look like. Mm. So he's, yeah, he's got them on sides of buildings and in galleries all over the country. It looks like his name up in the upper right-hand corner. Yeah, his, Matt uh, signature. Yep. Mm -hmm. Next, please. Okay, this is in the Jazz District. I couldn't quite pinpoint where it was, but when Dave and I were down there walking around, there were several uh, murals. And this is done by Evan Jackson. His, his painting name or, or muralist name is Heaven Paints. He's a local painter and muralist. Um, and his paintings are also all over Kansas City. Um, the, the subject of this one, Speedy Huggins, was born in Arkansas, but he, his family moved to Kansas City and he, where he became a self-taught tap dancer. And when he graduated from ninth grade in 1928, um, he was dancing in the nightclubs in 1809. And he was given the name Speedy because of his slow, soft shoe dance style. So he that performed... Name. Huh? That, name, that name sounds familiar to me somewhere out of my past, and I cannot. Uh, I think I've not. seen him perform. I've heard him. I think he's quite well known in the jazz world. Um, he, he yes, I've, I've seen him perform. Oh, have you really? Okay. Yeah. I saw him at Harleen's, but Pierre no, knew him. He used to pick him up and take him to gigs. Oh, all fun. Okay, that's Debbie. That's a, the faceless Debbie. I hear her. <laughs> yeah. um, but it's a, it's a good I, reason for it. I'll tell you later. But Okay. <laughs> he performed during Europe and um, in the Army during World War II. And then when he got back to Kansas City, he went to the Conservatory of Music at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, and studied drum and percussion. So then he played with several known jazz bands throughout Kansas City. Um, and was featured in the documentary, The Last, Last of the Blue Devils. He didn't become quite as famous mm -hmm. as, as Charlie, <laughs> there, Debbie, Charlie Parker and Count Basie, but he performed at every local jazz, jazz club and jazz event within <clears throat> Kansas, Kansas, Kansas City. Yeah, that's where I know him from. Not okay. know him personally, but have seen him. Um, the, the information said he was one of the most beloved musicians in Kansas City. And this is just one of the murals within uh, throughout Kansas City that are honoring um, our local jazz le legends. Uh, since, since, we're, since we're talking about jazz just a little bit, yeah. let me ask a question. Does anybody know if uh, they're still having uh, uh, on, the, on the plaza, <clears throat> what's the, uh, the church up on the uh, far west end of it, uh, Friday nights? At least once a month, they had uh, um, a, a jazz uh, evening. Uh, I think it's seven, oh. seven is bucks. It, yeah, is it a day. Unitarian church? Yes, I believe so. No, it's Unity Temple on the plaza. Unity, Unity Temple. Temple. Okay, has anybody done that? We just, we, Kathy and I used to be pretty pretty regular for a couple of years, and then uh, things got in the way, I guess, and and I haven't been back. I just, but it, I would highly recommend it. Uh, if you like jazz, because that's that's what they are. Interesting. Uh, Debbie, do you know if that's still happening? Well, they were doing it like on the first Wednesday, and uh, and Glenn Smith was going 
down there. Uh, but it was uh, Tim Whit Whitman. Tim. Tim Whitmer. Uh, yeah, Tim Whitmer but, was the yeah. like the host. Yes. Huh. Yeah, I don't uh, know. The, the bass, on. bass player uh, taught at uh, Kansas, uh, Kansas City Community, Kansas City, Kansas Community College. Um, and I was there the, the, the night of the day that Dave Brubeck died. Hmm. That was, you, you can imagine what the, uh, uh, what we played that night. Yeah. Hmm. Wow. I know we've got several jazz lovers within our group. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Next, please. Okay, th uh, this one is Create Your Own Racket. And it's done by a, a artist named Psych Style, whose name is really Phil Schaefer. And he owns Psych Style Industries and they do murals, custom uh, commissions and art consulting. And Lucid Arts is a, the other artist on this piece. And he um, is an artist and a musician. So this one's in the Crossroad Districts at 17th and Locust. Um, and I didn't take the entire wall because to the left though, there's a, another character that belongs with this piece that kind of looks like Dick Tracy. Um, this piece was created by both of the artists, both working on the design and layout and then uh, the Lucid Arts Fellow, um, one of them did the background and the other one did the actual detail on the photo. And they did it over the summer and they took about 40 hours and, and three months to complete. The artists worked on the mirror during their lunch breaks and Saturday afternoons. So Lucid also goes by the name of Lucid Flows and he's a local rap artist. And both of these guys have murals throughout the Kansas City area. Next. This one, it, <laughs> this is me trying to do a pan, panoramic photo, first of all. That's why there's kind of a hump in the middle. Um, this one is on the side of Apex Engineering in, at Sixth and Locust. And John Harrington is the artist and his, his, um, he's better known as Riff Rap Giraffe. And he created this theme on Apex Engineering um, to, uh, you know, with a, a lean towards construction and engineering. And then he and his wife, Amy, are organizers of the C, the Spray CMO Festival. Riff Raff studied at JCCC and then went on to the Art Institute of Chicago. So we have a local tie on this guy. Um, one of the, the building that it's on is, like I said, it's in the Crossroad Districts and it's over a hundred years old. And the firm that owned it wanted to expand and attract new talent. So part of their, the inside of this building, um, they have a modern workplace that includes a lounge, beer tap, dark board, glass garage door for Friday happy hours. So kind of a fun, fun place to work. <laughs> okay, next. And they have solar heating too. Probably. And this, this is just another one done by the same artist, Riff Raff Giraffe. And this one is... Um, 1700 East Locust in the Crossroads area. He has several throughout town, but this was another fun one that has a whole lot going on. <laughs> All right, next please. This is part of a mural um, with Count Basie highlighting the Midland, some of the local jazz uh, uh, greats here in, in locations in Kansas City. This was done by Alexander Austin. He, he, he's got quite the story though. He came to city, Kansas City in search of an advertising job, but found he didn't have the qualifications. So he took a low paying job and was struggling to survive. Well, then he lost his job, ended up on the streets. So he was approached by um, another man and who, who guided him to City Union Mission. And from that point forward, he got his life back on track. He was able to use his artistic talent that he had. Um, and he's done a number of murals throughout town in Power and Light District Crossroads. And he's done one, a beautiful one on the side of City Union Mission, which was kind of a thank you and a give back to the, um, the mission. Um, he's also painted images of Martin Luther King, Barack Obama, Nelson Mandela, and the, 
he did a um, Major League Baseball Hometown Heroes event, and he drew pictures of each of the 2013 Royals rosters, roster players. He, each of them, all the players signed their, their picture, and then they sold them for $1,000 each to benefit the city ammunition. And this one is in the parking lot at Walnut and Truman in the Power and Light area. He, he I, did the one on Operation Breakthrough, too. Yes, I he did, Debbie. I meant to mention that. I shared it, and he came back and thanked me. So he's my Facebook friend. Well, then that nice. <laughs> yeah, he did do that one. Okay, next, please. Okay, this mural... Is, it does have a title, it's called Charlie Parker's Mood, and it reflects the history of African Americans that on uh, creating the, the jazz district and cultivating and mastering jazz in the area. This was done by J.C. Daniels, or J.T. Dan JT Daniels. His comment is, whenever I see a blank wall, I see an opportunity to, to communicate. <laughs> so this one actually is right across the street from the Gem Theater in um, the jazz district. And he I, know some, I know some kids like that, you know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, there's a lot of that kind of art in Kansas City, too. Yeah. Uh, he lives in Kansas City, Missouri, and he graduated with a BFA from Park University. Uh, he became the designated artist for school projects, painting custom skateboards, illustrations for friends and mentors. He uses his art to support and uplift the community. His art can be found all over the Kansas City area, but businesses, streetcar stops, galleries, and local neighborhoods. One of his favorite sayings is SUP, which stands for surviving under pressure. So you'll see that SUP in many of his um, paintings. Okay, next. I love that piece. I, I think I, it's quite beautiful. It is, I love the colors in it. And this is my favorite one <laughs> <laughs> in all of Kansas City. Um, so the Love Kansas City mural was also done by Scribe, which is Donald uh, Ross. This one is on the side of the um, Fox Equipment Company on Southwest Boulevard in West Penway, Kansas City, Missouri. So just as you come right off the highway there. Um, this, it, you have to really spend time looking at this mural. And I did for a, a long time to try and identify all of the characters that are in here, but there is such, there's a nod to both Kansas and Missouri. Um, he is also, Donald Ross is also the artist and resident for Children's Mercy Hospital. So if you've ever been in the hospital, you see the beautiful fun paintings on the floors and the walls and probably the ceilings that are done by the by scribe. And he even did a, a tactile mural for um, the Children's Center for the Visually Impaired. So this, 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 I have a list of all the things that are on here, or most of them anyway. You will find all of the Kansas City sporting teams. There's the Royals, Chiefs, Sporting KC, the Jayhawks, the Missouri Tigers. You'll also see symbols from both states. There are Kansas, the symbols of the honeybee, the catfish, the western meadowlark, sunflowers, and for Missouri, the eastern bluebird, catfish, and the white hawthorn and honeybee. There's famous figures um, from Kansas City, both famous and infamous, that we have that have been that were from here. Um, Walt Disney, who created, you know, Mickey Mouse in Kansas City. And if you'll notice, next to the uh, MU Tiger is Charlie Parker, whose nickname was Bird. If you'll notice on his face, he's got a bird beak. <laughs> um, and he was a native of Kansas City and a world-renowned jazz saxophonist. We have had Thomas Hart Benson, famous painter and muralist, Tom Pendergast, American political boss, and other things I suspect, who controlled Kansas City and Jackson County from 1925 to 1939. And then there's a few of the not so famous people, but were, that were important to Kansas City. Lucille Bluford, was a famous journalist and opponent of segregation in the American education system. And one of the Kansas City libraries um, was named after her. It's the Kansas City or Lucille H. Bluford branch of the Kansas City Public Library. 
And then there's a young man depicted on here. It's Prim Prima Vito Garcia. And he actually lost his life protecting his teacher from an attack um, after school one evening. So he is another, another one that, that's shown here as, as being important to the city. Um, all of the famous sites are on here. We have Old Westport, Children's Mercy, um, Starlight Theater, the Nelson Atkins is shown here, um, the Western Auto Sign, Gates Barbecue, we've got Union Station, um, the Kaufman Center, the Kansas City Skyline, and the World War I Memorial. And I'm sure there's a number of things in here I haven't figured out yet. I don't know, Jonathan, I don't know if you know, this little fox on the lower right-hand corner with the beard yeah. is in. I can't figure out what his reference is to Kansas City, but if anybody knows, I would like to know. <laughs> um, I wonder if it has a relationship to Fox 4 TV. And it might. I was trying to find out if Fox 4 was the first station in town, or but I don't know that for sure. Um, a mm. lot of scribes murals, murals will have um, the bees in them and they'll have rhinos in them. So those are kind of the characters he uses pretty consistently throughout his, his uh, mur murals. See the steer, the Hereford steer. Um, oh yes, that's true. For the West Bottoms of their cattle. No, I'm, um, I've that's seen true. it up, uh, up around the airport. Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, and the other one I missed, it's on the love one, I believe, is um, Scout. Mm. Is in the yeah. O. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. You can look at this for a long time, and I'm sure there's other things that we've all probably missed at one point. But it's, it's fun. It's fun to look at. So anyway, that's the end of my story. It looks like the top of uh, the E there, it looks like um, the plaza. Oh, I bet that is the plaza. I was thinking it was Starlight, but I bet it's the plaza. Oh, maybe it, maybe I'm wrong. It could well, be. No, you're probably right. That would make more sense. Well, and you got the covered wagon at Westport. Yeah, the Conestoga yeah. there. Yeah. Mm. I wonder if that that B, like I am love, only it not doesn't quite say that. With Hell's birds. Oh, maybe there. he's got bees throughout a lot of his paintings. Isn't the bee the, the Kansas State insect? Oh, I thought somebody had mentioned that one time. It might be. It might be. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. cool. Come here. It's pretty fun. Yeah. Hey. Dick, Dick, you want to talk about this one? <laughs> yeah, well, more or less. Um, <laughs> I had, uh, oh, a couple of years ago, uh, we had driven around town down in the uh, um, the old livestock area. Uh, you know, the 12th Street Bridge crosses over, and they're uh, uh, they do lots of uh, garage sale kinds of things down there. I don't know if anybody spends any time doing that, but uh, it's interesting. Uh, the old livestock area they got wiped out in 1951 flood, which I happened to have witnessed. I didn't cause it. I just witness it um so there but in its um rejuvenation a lot of um, murals went down there well no point in telling you that because i lost all those pictures so i promised jonathan i would go take a few more um to kind of make up for that so this is my 39th street strip uh from state line east over to maine so um, um, this one is art of a sort. Um, I've seen these so many places uh, around the country that I didn't realize we had one here. And uh, as my understanding is, it's uh, the, the lock in the uh, uh, fence is uh, what, partnership? It's, uh, it's lovebirds, it's we'll never split up. Yeah, okay. those on bridges. Yeah, I've seen that before. I think they'll be on bridges, yes. Isn't that called Locks of Love? Oh sounds good to, sounds good to me. I think that's <laughs> I think that's the hair, the hair stuff. Yeah, hair too. But, but it worked for this too. However, if you want some some art involved, 
you might notice the uh, ice uh, uh, that's dribbled down through the fence and made kind of an interesting. Mm -hmm. Oh well, <laughs> I, I went in and converted to black and white because the colors were very good, kind of blurry. So uh, anyway, okay, let's 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 leave this one behind. Before you go on, Dick, you know, I when I saw this, when I went looking, because I hadn't talked to you about it, I went looking to see, I thought maybe it was part of a bridge or something. There's actually a bridge in Kansas City that has locks, locks of love. Yeah, Red Bridge. Red Bridge yeah. Yeah. Yes, that's right. You're right. If you, if you go to Portland, Maine, um, there's a fence along the, uh, uh, the seafront it just seems to go forever. And that's the first ones I'd ever seen. Okay, this one uh, is an ice cream store. Um, and <clears throat> uh, Laurie, guess who, uh, who painted uh, this? Scribe. Ross. <laughs> yeah, it's one of these guys. I can't think of his name. Uh, yeah, well, definitely it was Ross uh, because uh, of the honeybee. Oh yeah, I can see the bee. Okay, yep, yeah, it was him. A little bit of a close up, and you can see his his uh, folk or uh, fake signature down below, um, yeah. scribe. Right. Yeah. And I was I'm really glad you knew who he was uh, because I did not. Uh, but I have scribe on about five or six of my pictures that I'm going to uh, share with you. Yeah, he's done so much throughout the city. Tons. Well, Children's Mercy hired him, and he was doing a lot of stuff that, you know, in the hospital, the children's, well, it's all children, but yeah. Yeah, he's the resident, Maryland resident there, residence there. Yeah. And I decided, sure I, a, I think he's a Kansas City native. I think he's from this area. Ross is? He might be. Okay. Uh, and I decided I really wouldn't show this to to children because it would... Oh, it would destroy their concept of where the honeybee gets its nectar. This one's trying to lick <laughs> an ice cream cone. From ice cream. <laughs> okay, we can move. Ooh. Wow. This, I took a small portion of, of a long building right there, 39th. Um, and I narrowed down, I cut out everything else, but I kept the uh, light. Um, the light up uh, up above hanging off the outdoor light um but it's just abstract all over this building um and there's no message to it it's just kind of cool and it's where, like where was it do you remember yeah uh whereas the uh the locks were on the uh, south side of the street this is on the north side of the street right on the corner and we're just about three blocks maybe from KU Med, from State Line. So it's very close, black and white. I didn't even, I didn't have to uh, uh, get rid of the color on this one, it already was. I have no idea what it represents. You can, uh, kind, of, hmm? you can kind of see some images in there, in there that look like fish. I see, yeah, right under the light, I may see a bird wings out, and I might see a steer head, yeah. uh, or, or perhaps uh, more like a deer head um, down below it, almost, and maybe even be a little sailboat, the two characters below that with a sail. Mm -hmm. but, but, but I'm certainly not going to. Uh, win a contest with I see a uh, um, a tree saw to the far left the one where you have the long handle I mean a handle and the long blade it's uh, mm -hmm. vertical so we can go crazy on, on anything here you know what it looks like Dick from do you, I can't remember what we used to call them where you go look at them really really close that's what I'm trying to do and then, and then come back out and see if there's something inside there I, I can't remember what they call those. They're real popular, but you look at it really, really close and then you move back and you try to find a, an object in there, but I don't see one. What's the, what's the psychological thing? Is it a Rorschach or something? Like that? Rorschach. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, yeah, it is sort of the same image on the other side, just, uh, just the other direction. Hmm, I don't know, but I'm, it's, I'm going dizzy here looking at it, so. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Guess who? Yeah, yeah. He's, all, he's all over 39th Street uh, as well. Um, this is this, actually, this was uh, directly across the street to the west uh, from what, what we just saw. And this is the first time I noticed the uh, signature of Scribe and noticed the honeybee again. So I, I began to put this together, you know. <laughs> Plus the characters all look alike in their own funky way. Yeah. Big eyes and uh, exaggerated everything. They're not scary. <clears throat> no. Hey, pardon? They aren't scary. They look like they would be fun or funny. Funny characters. Yeah, well, it is. Once you see them, it's really hard to leave without studying it. You're right. And seeing all the clever things that are probably there. Mm -hmm. She's escaping into that red door, perhaps. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although can't be escaping. She's sort of grinning and looking back at him as he is looking at her. Hmm. Now, well, the bee, bee looks like he's doing this. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the bee's embarrassed. Yeah. <laughs> well, and I don't think people use boom boxes so much anymore. I do because it costs money to buy something else. Oh. <laughs> yeah, the one thing he doesn't have on his, I notice even when he signs it, I, they're not dated. Oh, uh, I don't yeah, think. most of, some of these dates were the earliest, I think it was uh, 2013. And the latest one, I think, was uh, 9, 2019. Okay. But you're right. I don't see one here. It, it could be right down there at the very bottom of, the, uh, of his uh, signature. True. But you can't read it. Mm -mm. Okay. Let's go east on 39th. There is again. Oh. I have two pictures of this one. This is from the head back, you know, back toward the tail, and the other one, which actually looks gives you more description uh, of the uh, of scribe and what he has written on the tail. So, Jonathan, move to the next one, and I think it's a better shot. Just more detail, it seems like, down here. Mm -hmm. Detail telling me what, I have no idea. Um, here, you, here, you can see the date of 2013 on this one. Oh, yeah, you sure can. Down by his name. Mm -hmm. kind, of, kind of strange, big old catfish. I, just, I like his work. It's so, it's so detailed, and even if you look at the different... Uh, Honeybees, the facial expressions are so different from one to the next. Mm -hmm. They're all just kind of whimsical, but they are different. They're all, everyone's different. And, and Laurie, this is the second rhinoceros there he, who is running, running the ship uh, that I had not noticed before until you mentioned uh, that yeah, rhinoceri he's... are part of this agenda. Hey, Lori, did you did, did you say during your your talk why he likes to be so much? I can't remember. What you said. No, I didn't. I was looking real quick to see if I could figure out what the significance between the rhino and the bee. I just, I'm just wondering why he's got bees in every picture. That's what I was wondering. Boy, he sure has bees in his picture. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, I, um, when I saw this, I, um, I've slipped in something that Dick doesn't know about, and I won't play the whole thing. It's oh. a video of the painting of this, this mural.
My gosh. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> the detail. It, it is, uh, it's amazing. I, I, he doesn't normally work that fast, of course, but uh, he does a wonderful job. Um, yeah. I have a the, few, go ahead. What was the question? Well, the, detail, the detail to me is amazing. And you think of us trying to use a spray can to paint anything and there's paint everywhere and it's, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm impressed. Lori had a picture in an earlier presentation of this particular one. And so I, I've taken her uh, credits that is a gentleman by the name of Parbox. Um, I assume that's how, how it's pronounced, something close to that. It was part of that uh, Spray Simo Festival and it's down at on 31st Street. Uh, I, I'm going to Operation Breakthrough uh, and uh, I see this, um, this mural. And so I had to stop and take a picture of it. I thought it was quite, quite fascinating, multicolored fish. And right alongside it is a mural by Patch Whiskey. It's the corner of 31st and, and Walnut. Uh, and he is, uh, he's pretty well known too for his, his work. Um, he's, he's been, he's got paintings in every place from Nashville to Chicago to Detroit. Uh, and um, you can see his signature in the upper left-hand corner here. I can't remember, this is called something about a ghost and I can't, I didn't write it down. So I, I don't remember ghost exactly. Beard. Pardon? Ghost beard. Ghost beard? Up beard. in the corner. Ah, well, that would that would make sense if I simply read it, right? Um, I like his characters too. Mm -hmm. They're a lot more simpl simplified or simplistic than than um, scribes are, but I, I I like his images. And yeah. this one is um, saw an earlier one by uh, J T Daniels. It was the the jazz one in the mm -hmm. uh, the jazz district. This one's on. Uh, Ruby Jean's Kitchen and Juicery, uh, and it's kind of kitty corner from Operation Breakthrough. Uh, and I, uh, I passed it several times and finally pulled in the parking lot, figured I had to take a picture of it. And here's a little bit more of a close-up of it. I like the detail. Uh, we used to call this graffiti. Uh, now mm -hmm. it's uh, urban art or, uh, you know, wall art or whatever. I think it's, right. uh, yeah, it's fascinating to see what they do. And this one, you can see the, the sup. And there, the what does it stand for, Lori? It, uh, I'm gonna tell you. You just keep talking. I'll find it. <laughs> I can't remember. You said I didn't know what it stood for. I thought it was kind of like, "What's up?" You know, is what I thought it was no. standing for. But anyhow, <laughs> it's uh, actually the fish. It's quite a quite a beautiful mural, I think. And then we're back to uh, scribe. And this one is in, in uh, Overland Park. It's the bluegill, which I understand is the, the state fish. And so it's on Newton Street and uh, uh, on the interurban like art building. So, mm. and I love the bee. I, I uh, Googled what the significance of the bee was for scribe. Oh, how'd you, what'd you find? It, it landed on a site called Format Mag dot com and this is really deep actually the rhinoceros is a self characterization or self portrait oh. and uh, he describes <laughs> rhinos are solitary animals and many of their characteristics he identifies with and the he relates the struggle of his aggressive and bug-eyed bees with the struggle many face with religion Oh, wow. Okay. I know. It's like, it's really deep here. And uh, he talks about the bees are an illustration of peer pressure, a part of mindless hive mentality assigned to do until you die. I mean, it's really kind of bizarre, actually. Interesting. Huh. Wow. So fascinating, really. Um, I love that fish. Yeah, I do. It. It's an absolutely gorgeous bluegill. And then if you go kind of back behind Kitty Corner from the inner urban art uh, place, I can't think what it's actually called, you find the, uh, the meadowlark, which I guess is also the, the Kansas State bird. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is also painted by Sprout. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you're, not, 
I didn't know the bluegill was the uh, state fish. I would have thought catfish. I think. <laughs> I may, I may be wrong. I thought I had read somewhere that it was uh, the bluegill, but I'm not a fisher person, so I wouldn't know for sure. No, I just assumed that uh, you, you had catfish all over the state. I just seemed logical, but I'm sure you're right. You've researched it. Dick was being funny. <laughs> actually, you're, actually, I think you're right, Dick. It is a, it is a catfish. Yeah. <laughs> really? I think I, I just looked it up. Huh. I'm sorry, Jonathan. I didn't mean to really well, make it look bad. Well, it simply shows that sometimes uh, you get fake news when you do research. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jonathan, that SUP stands for Surviving Under Pressure. Oh, okay. Yes. I need to remember that. Yeah. Well, so here's, here's SUP again with... Uh, uh, J.T. Daniels uh, artwork, and this, of course, is on the Thousand Villages wall down in mm -hmm. downtown Overland Park. I haven't seen that one yet. Okay. So, yeah, well, is that on the uh, alley? Hmm. I think um, it's, it's in the alley, isn't it? On the on the east side. Um. Yeah, probably. Yeah. I, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I see the one way sign, and then that alley is one way. I think. Mm -hmm. mm. I like that one. That's pretty. And then we'll turn it back over to Lori if she <laughs> wants to comment on these last three. Well, I look, tried to find some information on some of these, and they were it was a little slim. So this one, all I can figure out is it was done by Sebastian Coolidge, which he signed it. So that part wasn't hard. But I could find nothing else about this painting, and very little about him but I just thought it was kind of quirky when we saw it. See, some of these are tucked in parking lots, they're in alleys, they're on the side of a, a small unused building. They're, every time you turn around and there's another one. So you can Where was, go. Where's this one located, Laura? I, I don't even remember where it was. Oh, okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Just okay. drive up and down the streets and look for them? Yeah, yeah, D Dave was my chauffeur. So we, I drug him all over Kansas City one afternoon. So, and I couldn't find anything on this one either. It looks like the printing says Cybus, but again, I could find absolutely nothing on this mural, but it was just on a garage door for a, a building. I don't know if it was purposely put there or, you know, randomly put there. I have no idea. I don't even know what the building is. So it's a hot, hot dog putting mustard on the building. It is. And that I think the word says Cybo, S-I-B-A-S, but mm. nothing. I just thought it was cute. <laughs> okay, one more. Okay, and this is the, it, this is a scribe again. It's the Grinders Rhino. Um, this is on 18th Street between Locust and Oak in Kansas City, Missouri. He painted this back in 2015 and the wall references an old band that he belonged to. And each B represents a band member and their album had a song in it about a rhino. That's that. Catch 22. I don't, I don't know if it's on the side of Grinders. I don't, I've not been to Grinders downtown. Debbie, does that look familiar? I've been to Grinders, but I haven't seen that, but I've not been on the side of the building e either. Okay. Just uh, off, of yeah. Okay. But there's a uh, the, that crossroads area, so it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Well, and, and Strat oh, it's Grinders, and he the guy that owns Grinders is Stretch. His name is Stretch, and he's an artist. Oh, okay. Well, this one does it was done by Scribe, but um, right. Yeah. But if you look at the top left of the building it, it, it looks like it's blanked out but it says grinders mm -hmm. i don't know if they they were one place and then they moved downtown or have they always been in the same place well there's that one over on plum of course right. that, this one's stuff. downtown somewhere though it must is there yeah. only one downtown yeah. uh yeah they were putting up you know they were offering franchises for different cities so they were looking to 
expand, okay. but that was the first one I ever went to was this one. Okay. okay. They have good, they have good pizza there. They do. And, right. That's all I have. So if you want an afternoon, you have nothing to do, drive around downtown, Overland Park, over by AKU, there's, there's murals everywhere. <laughs>